Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Android App Arena is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Android App Arena, episode 82, for Wednesday, January 27th, 2016. Photo Tools. This episode of Android App Arena is brought to you by Automatic, the connected car company that improves your driving and integrates your car into your digital life. For more information, visit automatic.com slash twit and enter the code twit to get 20% off your purchase. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Android App Arena. I'm your host, Jason Howell. It's that time again where I take a look at a few new photo tools that have been building up in my collection over the past many months. These apps are always some of my favorites because, well, I use the camera on my phone so much more than almost any other feature. And amazingly, photo tools for mobile continue to get better and better, more precise, higher quality, all that stuff. The things we once relied on for our desktop computing power uh, are suddenly totally achievable with that tiny little computer that's in your pockets. And alas, here are a few that exemplify that. Let's take a look at three awesome photo tools in this week's roundup. All right, everyone, prepare yourselves for another photo filter app. Look, I get it. Filter apps are a great way to take your smartphone pictures and transform them into something a bit more stylized, maybe a bit less boring. I normally find filter apps to be a bit too feature filled personally, so many filters to navigate through in order to post that picture to just get it out there. Retrica does a good job of offering a clean interface, a crazy selection of filters and layout options while still keeping everything pretty simplified so you can tap and go. Now down in the bottom right corner are your filter options. First of all, tap that Venn diagram button to scan through all of your options. You can see there's a lot down here. Any filter that happens to be selected can then be snapped to, by tapping the camera icon that's embedded inside the watch. Now you can swipe through the vast selection, select and snap, pretty easy to do. You can also go to the very end of the list for filter settings where you can eliminate the filters from your main list that you aren't going to need on a day-to-day -day basis and that'll trim down your selections if you want. If you want a totally random experience, you can tap the randomizer button on the camera screen until you like what you see and then go. Now, also you get this vignette button, which is nice to have. Also a nice center focus option for blurring the outer edges of your image. And there isn't a whole lot of, if any, tweakability on that. It's either on or off. There's also this photo booth option. So we'll go ahead and tap it once to activate, but if I tap it again, it'll let me pick from a wide selection of photo booth layouts. I'll go ahead and set, you know, a two or three photo strip here. Now down at the bottom, I can use the slider to pick the amount of time that's taken between each snap. And then I'll just tap to take the pictures and it fires off as expected. One, two, three. Now, when it's done, it's a one tap process to send this all out to Instagram or you can share out wherever you like. The interface is easy to understand, and let's face it, this is a great app if you're selfie obsessed. Find Retrica for free in the Play Store. Let's say you do your best in your professional smartphone photography to adhere to the thought that symmetry in your images is the most important thing that all the lines in your imagery direct the eye to certain places, that the horizon is actually level and not kind of slanted in any way. In a simplistic sense, these are things that true photographers pay very close attention to in order to elevate the quality and the impact of their pictures. SKRWT, maybe there's a better way to say that, but I'm just gonna say that, is a new photo editor that packs some interesting and unique tools for tweaking perspective in your images. This might not be as useful for things like portraits, let's say, but for landscapes, 
and pictures of giant structures, you really start to see its power. I'll go ahead and import this image from my Google Photos library. It has integration for Google Photos, which is a nice bonus. It's a building with a statue in front of it. And as you can see, it was taken at street level. So the perspective is that of a person on the ground shooting upwards as it was when the picture was taken. First, I'll go ahead and use this tool to shift the top towards me a bit. That kind of flattens things out and lines up the, you can see all the lines kind of lining up perfectly there. And that brings all the lines in check uh, in the vertical space. Now you can see a slant to the side as well. I can correct that with this tool. I'll swipe from the side and that actually accepts my edit You'll see that check mark appear uh, on the side. You can also use the check mark down at the bottom to accept your edit. Now, the statue is maybe a bit squatty after all of these adjustments, so I can stretch it out a bit. And now things look just a bit more symmetrical all around. There's also this fisheye correction tool for images that you import from places like your DSLR or even a GoPro. Now I can merge the corrections that I make into a new image with this button. That'll allow me to stack more edits on top of what I've already done. Now for 99 cents, you can purchase the MRRW, or I think it kind of stands for mirror, more or less, upgrade that gives you a bunch of cool mirroring effects that you can apply to your images. This really shines when used on architectural imagery. SKRWT is unique with its perspective tweaking editing tools and totally fun to play around with. Find SKRWT in the Play Store now. All right, so let's say you go on a trip and you take a bunch of pictures. You're there with your friends and all you want to share are some of the best pics from your trip after the fact with your friends. You can go to Facebook, of course, and post them image by image and hope everyone gets them all. Or you could sidestep all of the social networks and go rogue. Bundle is an app that allows you to group your photos together in, well, of course, a bundle and then share that bundle with anyone. I'll tap the plus icon and name my new bundle, first of all, and now I'm going to scan through my on-device images to pick all of the snaps that I want to share with everyone. It's kind of a bummer that it doesn't have access to Google Photos online. Who knows? Maybe they'll get there some day, but uh, there you go. Now, once I'm done picking my images, I'll go ahead and accept the pictures, and those will begin to upload to Bundle's cloud. Once I have a bundle in the cloud, I can then easily share the link with anyone and they'll have access to view that as well as to contribute to the album so everyone gets their picks in the collection as well. Now each image does have commenting as well as liking, so there's a bit of that social element included inside Bundle without being tied to another network. If you wanna back up your images to Dropbox or Google Drive, those options actually reside in settings and that can happen automatically on a per bundle basis. You can actually choose which services to automatically update when new picks are added to those bundles. Bundle is offering for a limited time a free bundle book uh, it's a printed book of your photos with 48 pages of bundle images printed inside. Now, don't get too excited. Shipping costs aren't included, and that ends up driving up the price depending on where you happen to live. For me, it was a lot of money. Your mileage may vary there. Bundle is a great way to facilitate the sharing and exchange of photos from an event without being tied to any sort of social network. Find Bundle for free in the Play Store. Now, this is truly a category that never stops filling up with high quality options. That's great for me because I do this show. Please help me out, though. Send me some of your favorite photo tools. Just email me at arena at twit.tv and I will make a future episode with your suggestions guaranteed. Where would we be without you? Seriously. All right. Before we move on, let's thank the sponsor of today's episode. That's Automatic. Chances are your car hasn't fully kept up with technology and that's exactly where Automatic comes in. It's a small adapter that turns any car into a connected car. You just plug the Automatic into the same port that your mechanic uses to diagnose engine problems and it opens up a world of possibilities. Automatic lets you keep track of your fuel mileage, your vehicle health, uh, expense business trips with a tap, link your car to the connected devices that already power your life. 
you know, what's that that check engine light actually mean? Automatic's going to tell you, so you don't have to necessarily take it to the shop first and foremost. You can find out what Automatic has to say about it. Automatic can also integrate with your Nest thermostat to know when you're home. It can even provide the answer to one of life's most common questions, where on earth did I park my car? I've been using Automatic in my car for quite a while now, and it's just, it's it's really nice. It kind of simplifies certain things and connects you to your car using your smartphone, uh, it, which, I mean, aren't we always trying to kind of connect our lives to our smartphones these days? Uh, this is another way to do that. It works on nearly every car made after 1996, and it takes just minutes to install. It's a super easy installation. You just plug it in. Uh, it connects to your iPhone or your Android device over Bluetooth every time you get in the car and uh, turn the turn the car on. Uh, you get real-time performance data, intelligent coaching that'll help you maximize your fuel economy and reduce wear and tear in your vehicle. Dashboard web app actually provides granular information and lets you export your trips. So you kind of get a history of where you've been. Gives a plain English explanation for your check engine light. And the platform, uh, Automatic's app platform, integrates with Nest, like I said, but also your mechanic, fresh books, and more. Even uh, if this, then that for more possibilities so you can integrate your car into your digital life, maybe file business expenses uh, with Expensify. You've got a lot of options. Supports Apple Watch and Pebble. There are no monthly fees or subscriptions required and automatic never sales your data. Automatic is normally $99.95, but when you use our special offer code TWIT, you're going to save 20%. Go to automatic.com slash twit for more information and to purchase and use offer code twit to save 20% off the regular purchase price. That's automatic.com slash twit. And we thank them for their support. All right. Up next, uh, a fun, I say that in air quotes, way to wake up in the morning. It's this week's big app. All right, so Microsoft does it again with a new alarm clock app, of all things, that can either be a lot of fun first thing in the morning or drive you to toss that phone into the wall. It's out of Microsoft Garage, Microsoft's experimental apps arm, and it's called Mimicker Alarm. So what's new here? We'll set an alarm, and in doing so, we can set all the usual stuff, of course, what days of the week, what time of the day, uh, the ringtone that's assigned to that alarm, if the device is going to vibrate while it rings, but that's kind of all expected in alarm clock apps. Here's what Mimicker Alarm does differently. You can choose to activate one or all of the three offered mimics inside the app. These are basically methods for ensuring that you're awake after your alarm goes off. So let's take a look at them. First up. Color capture. When you, the alarm goes off, you're going to be given a particular color, let's say green. And now you have to hunt for something around you in your personal space that matches the color green, then point the phone's camera at it and snap the picture. If it matches the requirement that's been asked of you, congratulations, you are now fully awake. Another challenge is tongue twister, where you're shown a phrase and given a short amount of time to speak the phrase into the phone without messing it up on delivery. Uh, voice to text actually makes that judgment. It does it very well. And finally, the really fun one, express yourself, where you're asked to mimic an emotion that's printed on screen and then snap a selfie of it, of course. So let's say you need to be sad or angry or happy. In this case, Microsoft is using its emotion API to determine if you truly look like that emotion. Now, what happens if you can't beat the required challenge? Or what if you happen to run out of time trying to beat it and you just can't get there? Well, the alarm fires off yet again, and it's Groundhog's Day all over again. Better get to practicing your disgusted face. Yet again, Microsoft belts out something unexpected and actually very well designed for the Android platform. Mimicker Alarm is free in the Play Store. Now, I might not actually use Mimicker Alarm as my at home alarm in the morning, but I may just set it off at random times because it's fun to see what kind of faces you have to do in order to qualify some of those emotions. I consider myself a good face maker and I had a challenge uh, when I was trying a few of the emotions, but I got mean down. 
Uh, send your favorite apps and categories to arena at twit.tv. Sorry if I creeped you out there a little bit. Uh, or you can post those to subreddit uh, at androidapparena.reddit.com, and that'll share them with me and the rest of the world. This show uh, plays live every Wednesday around 5 p.m. Pacific following Tech News Today at twit.tv slash live. And the new episode will appear later that evening in the feeds and on the show page at twit.tv slash arena. All right, that's it, folks. Thanks so much for joining me today. My name is Jason Howell, and I will see you next week in the arena.